orbitals and atoms. Okay, so before we can move on to orbital filling rules and electron configurations for multi-electron atoms, we need to talk about something called an electron wave function. And in short, this is just a term for what we call an orbital. And we call them electron wave functions because electrons behave as waves in atoms. And so this physical state of an electron in an atom is described by a wave function. And that's associated with a certain energy. Now the symbol for the wave function is the Greek letter psi. And as I said, this wave function includes information about space and time. And we're not going to go into details about that. Now when we square the wave function, we can determine where the electron will probably be in a certain volume. So for instance, squaring the wave function, we can get a probability density, which gives us information about the most likely places to find an electron in an atom. Now, we're just keeping this very, very general. And so this squared wave function actually gives these shapes of atomic orbitals, okay? So these are the three main types of orbitals that we're going to discuss in this course. Okay, so S orbitals have a spherical shape. So basically they form a sphere around the nucleus, and there is one S orbital in every principal shell. So starting with N equals 1, there's a 1 S orbital. And each principal shell after that also includes one. So there's a 2s, and a 3s, and a 4s, etc. So it keeps on going up. Okay, so p orbitals are the ones that are shaped like a dumbbell or a snowman. And you can think of it whichever way you want. Now there are three p orbitals in every principal shell, but it has to be equal to or higher than n equals 2. So n equals 1 does not have p orbitals at all. But everything higher than n equals 2 does have p orbitals, and we're going to see why that is when we talk about quantum numbers. All right, now here's a representation of a d orbital, and most of the d orbitals, 4 out of 5 of them, look like this. So they have this cloverleaf shape. The 4 that look like this are just oriented differently in space but they have that basic shape. The other one is called dz squared, and it has a little bit different shape, but it looks a little bit like the f orbital on the next page, so I'll point that out when we get there. Now, there are five d orbitals for every principal shell, but again, now it has to be equal to or higher than n equals 3. Okay, so n equals 3 is the lowest principal shell that can have d orbitals. And again, when we talk about quantum numbers, we're going to see why that is. And then finally, f orbitals, there are seven f orbitals for every principal shell that is higher than n equals 4. That's the lowest n that can have f orbitals. And here's one of them. They all, some of them look quite different, but here's one of them. Now he looks a little bit like the dz squared, except there'd only be one of these rings. So that's kind of an idea of what the dz squared looks like. But this is one of the f orbitals. Some of them look quite different from this also. And remember, the lowest n level that can have f orbitals is n equals 4. OK, now there are additional higher energy orbitals like g, h, and i as we go up in n. Now, these orbitals are not filled in the ground state for any known element.